We begin with The Lighthouse by Summer Breeze. Most people had roses growing up the sides of their castle, but not me. I had gelatinous goop. Okay, that wasn't quite what it was, and it was sort of vine-like, but without buds of any kind, or leaves, or roots. Let me start at the beginning. First off, I got this castle on eBay. Yep. Avid gardener that I am, I was scrolling one day for a natural stone to build a pond, and suddenly I am looking at a fat, squat, turret for sale in the English countryside. Curious little monkey that I am, I clicked on the oddly titled ad, Lighthouse for Sale. Obviously a typo on crack, I thought, or a very tongue-in-cheeky owner. It was within cycling distance of a quaint little town, had a roof shaped like the rook in a chess game I had as a child, its very own stone bridge, and a moat. Yep, an honest-to-God moat. No crocodiles in England, thank God, that I'd ever heard of anyway. So what the moat contained was a mystery in itself. It looked pretty, though, and I have always been a sucker for castles, not to mention I wouldn't need to build a pond after all. I checked the price again. Hold on, I thought. A thousand pounds? Surely that couldn't be right. And no property taxes ever to be paid? Why had no one snapped it up? It was too cute for words. Visions of peddling to town in a lavender, wide-brimmed straw hat filled my head. My bike would have an aqua body and ride like a dream. I could grow things on the roof rack of my castle and clothe her nakedness with cabbage roses. I didn't know whether cabbage roses climbed, but I figured I'd find a variety that does once I got there. That was three months ago. An insane amount of packing and a tax refund later, I was the proud owner of a fat turret. I never did ask the guy why he'd called it a lighthouse. He was so happy. I was so happy. It was a freaking celebration of epic proportions. Of course, all my friends thought I was nuts. But finally, they grudgingly accepted the reality of me moving away with promises of open visits once I got settled. I hightailed it out of there. My plane barely needed wings. I could have flown on my own giddy excitement. And now, here I am, watching the slime crawl back up to my second-story window. This is a daily occurrence, believe it or not. It is nice enough to move aside each time I climb up the stairs that circle the entire exterior to the roof. Big of it, really. At least I won't slip to my death. The lack of railing might do it. It must have been dormant when I'd arrived. That's the only explanation I can come up with. I had paused on my darling, mossy-coated stone bridge and peered over the side to investigate the gorgeous depths of my moat. There was the expected algae, of course. The man had said he hadn't been out there since he'd cleared out his belongings, so I knew there would be some overgrowth. No crocodiles, much to my relief, but I did see some large, vaguely circular blob at the muddy bottom, and I wondered what that plant was. It had tendrils that wafted gently back and forth, so it shone signs of life. I made a mental note to thoroughly investigate later, and got on with the business of making my castle my home. I was too exhausted the first night to really notice anything unusual, and too busy the next day. I enjoyed the quiet, which I associated to leaving city life behind. The following night, I wanted to check out my view, so I headed to the window, realizing on the way that the moon was so bright I didn't need a light. Except when I got there, the moon was blue, and oh yeah, it was not a moon at all. I looked down incredulously, not believing my own eyes. Climbing all up the walls were, well... It reminded me of those shots of shorelines at night, all aglow with blue phosphorescent critters. My castle was a giant freaking nightlight. The eBay ad title suddenly made a lot more sense. So did the price. Where the heck had this stuff suddenly come from, I wondered. As I watched, it seemed to still be moving. I leaned out with great trepidation and arched my neck to look upwards, It was headed for the roof, 
Wonderful! I stretched out a finger and tentatively poked the nearest string. It recoiled from the contact, but settled back into place within a moment. Noticing that it stayed away from the interior, and suddenly finding myself with a thin gelatinous coating on my fingertip, I thought it best to retreat and get it off me as soon as possible. I really hadn't thought it through before touching it. What if it had been flesh-eating goo? I mean, it obviously didn't eat stone, as my castle had been baby but smooth when I'd arrived. But that didn't mean I was safe. It was pretty and all, doing its sparkly, glowy thing, but I knew nothing about it. I made quick work of the shutters and plunged myself into darkness. Great. By some miracle, I survived the night and slept like a log. I awoke stunningly refreshed, stretching like a cat all over my fluffy duvet. I thought, if it's because of the stuff on the wall, maybe I could market it as a sleep aid. I did not have an iota of sore muscle, which was pretty amazing after the unpacking marathon. I could live with my home being a glowworm if it meant these kinds of side effects. I checked my fingertip and found it still with me. I wiggled it to make sure and it didn't fall off, so that was a plus. Feeling a bit braver, I tiptoed to the shutters. I held my breath, then boldly threw them open. I don't know why. It's not like it was a surprise attack, like I could scare the thing away. Who knows? I just did it. I peeked outside and did a full owl impression with my neck. Nothing. There was nothing there. I looked down. Nada. The thin strip of grass was all disheveled. The moat was glassy still. So still I could see right through the depths to the round blob I'd noticed before. Well then, I decided, today was the day to investigate. I left the shutters open to the brilliant sun and marched with steely purpose toward my gorgeously handcrafted built-in closet. Where the hell are my boots, I thought. I had purchased bright red Wellingtons because, hello, England, but they were nowhere to be found. My runners had somehow abandoned me as well, the cowards. No siree Bob was I going in that moat barefoot, not with Lord knows what in it. Satisfied with my jean cutoffs, and neon yellow tank, I grabbed my fluffy bunny slippers and hurried outside. Now, poking a possible alien or alternate universe blob is not really best done with fluffy bunny slippers. A stick, however, could handle it. A very long stick. If only I had one. The nearest trees, it appeared, were sturdy enough to weather any storm as a solitary branch littered the earth. No dead reeds either. Nada. Since when did a moat not have reeds? I rethought the bare feet idea. Nope. I spend 99.9% .9 of my life barefoot, but it was not happening here and now with this thing. There had to be something in the house I could use. The umbrella was going to be so gross to open after this, but hey, England equals rain equals clean umbrella. Turned out the moat was a wide little sucker, so I slowly eased the bunnies into the wetness, and I prayed I wouldn't end up knee-deep in primordial goo. Once I had my footing, I leaned on the umbrella for balance while I peered at the blob. Wow! It was bigger than it first appeared. It had to be twenty inches across, and on closer inspection, quite pretty. The center was a soft white that looked like magnolia petals before they opened. Around that, a ring of neon yellow had wispy tendrils coming out the sides. A russet ring surrounded the yellow one with longer, fiddlehead-type fronds growing upwards from there. It struck me they had looked a lot like tentacles. But the size of whatever this was did not match what I had seen last night. This was much smaller. Last night's would have been its big brother. With that thought, I figured it was more prudent that I do not poke it with my umbrella and offer myself as bait. The previous owner is going to get a phone call, I thought. No amount of gifted food in the fridge was going to make up for giant alien babies. I should have seen it coming. My previously oh-so-helpful salesman had disappeared off the face of the earth for a month anyway. Apparently, his vacation started the second I picked up the deed from the bank, and he was now unreachable, 
in wherever the hell is done. I was on my own. Thank God I had a laptop. So I headed off to town, sans bunnies in search of breakfast at Wi-Fi. According to Google, the only aliens were saucers, not blobs. They were some anemones that resembled the thing in the moat, but none were known to rock-climb castles. So I left town, knowing little more than before. I arrived home to find that what I had seen this morning were indeed tentacles, but they could stretch like the melted cheese in my omelette. In the sun, they shone translucent, were slow-moving, and the tips sought out their direction much like a worm does, blindly yet with scary accuracy. They were halfway up the wall, slithering more than climbing. I stared in somewhat morbid fascination, rooted to the spot, bike in hand, as a large insect landed on the tentacle closest to me. Faster than I could blink, it coiled around the insect and shrunk back into the water. So much for slowpoke. I dropped the bike and ran to the grassy edge in time to see it deposit its hull directly into its center flower petals. For the rest of the afternoon, I thanked God I was too big to fit in there. I had walked along the moat, and the creature was the only one among the deep purple irises and spiky white lilies. I hoped it needed another to reproduce, or at some point it was going to put out eggs or seeds or something, and I'd be up to my knees in moat monsters without a paddle. I put down a blanket and we snacked together, me on apple slices and cheese, my monster on bugs. There were a surprising amount of bugs. No way was I planting veggies anywhere near this guy, I thought, if I wanted them pollinated. I wouldn't have to worry about mosquitoes, though. I don't know why I saw it as a male, but I decided to name him Bert. I figured if we're going to be close neighbors, better to be on a first-name basis. I was going to have to get to know him, after all. I stayed well into the evening, watching the thick, translucent threads start to glow as the sun set, then become a bright blue of the night before. The longest bits hung from the roof, looking like a delicate wrought iron rim. Boy, it was going to be hard to grow roses around that, I realized. But I still wanted to try. I rose and gathered my blanket together, said good night to Bert, and headed indoors. Bert was not a morning blob, nor one for rainy days. I guessed it was because he lost some of his stickiness when he was wet, despite his being a water creature. The sun dried him off enough to have Bert happily munching again, though. When he was above water, I ducked under him to plant my roses. He would just have to work around them, I decided, as I was working around him. Besides, I figured it would draw more insects to him, and I'd learned he didn't enjoy getting stung by bees. For the next few weeks, I added flowers all around the base of the castle and veggies to the outer ring beyond soaked ground. A smallish, healthy crack willow partially hung over the moat, so I placed a small swing on it for birds, hoping Bert didn't suddenly want variety in his diet. As I mentioned before, he moved aside for me when I visited the roof. I guess it was better than getting stepped on. I had all sorts of pots up there, as well as a lawn chair for sunning myself or stargazing. Not much air traffic to worry about, thank God. Bert provided enough light that I could see my way up and down at night. Only once had I been slimed as he accidentally slung out a tentacle while I was passing by. It landed on my nose and then fell and dragged across my lips. It was a disgusting feeling, kind of like walking through a slimy spider web. And he tasted kind of swampy. But from then on, I knew he wasn't toxic to humans, or at least to me. Now he and I get along well enough. I don't want to invite any trouble, so the neighbors only come over early in the day, and I plan on getting honest reactions from any friends that visit, purely for my own enjoyment. Bert has grown, but not so much, so I have no idea where he puts it all. Figures. I met an alien blob that can metabolize his food better than I can. I don't try and prune him at all, because he may have defenses I really don't want to have to come at me. Plus... I like him eating mosquitoes, and the spiders in my house wisely stay put until early morning. I'm kind of grateful smaller critters don't even risk it. Yep, 
I'm loving my country life out here in my lighthouse. You should come visit.